PhotoP.com is an online version of Photoshop, but guess what? It's free. So let's jump into exactly how you can use PhotoP and how I use it myself for creating designs. All right, so here we have it. It's PhotoP.com. And when you get there, this is the first page that you're going to see. You can open it from computer. It's fantastic if you already had a Photoshop file, which is a .psd, you can open it right in PhotoP and it will even have all the layers from that file. So if you have a Photoshop file and you can't open it because you don't pay for Photoshop, here's a great way to edit it online. But for this tutorial, we're gonna start with a brand new file. So I'm gonna hit new project. And then up here in the corner, I can name my project. I'm trying to name it design. You can set the width and height. For this, we're creating a design which I want to print. So I'm actually gonna make sure it is a decent file size. I'm doing 5,000 by 5,000. And because I'm printing it, I'm gonna be setting this to 300 DPI. If this is something for the web, you can just keep it at 72, but for print, recommend it at 300. You also have a background, so you can set this to different colors. And because I want to print this, I'm actually going to have a transparent background for this file. And then I'm gonna hit create. And if you ever wanted some templates, they do offer a bunch at the side here, but we're not gonna use that today. I'm just going to quickly explain the user interface for you guys. This isn't gonna to be too in-depth. We will get more in-depth later in the tutorial when I'm showing you how to use specific tools. But for now, we have our left side over here, which is all of our tools. If you see this little arrow underneath all of them, if you just click and hold, it's gonna bring up some additional related tools. So these aren't all the tools. There are quite a bit in the side here. At the top, you have your file, your image, layer, select. Window is where you're able to open up some additional windows, but we're not gonna be using any of those today. We also have filters that you're able to apply to your layers or your designs. And then at the side over here, this is what we are gonna be looking at quite a bit, which is our layers panel. Our layers are our different elements. And with our layers, we can easily select them without trying to select one product and then something else is selected and we're moving our whole design in a way that we don't want to. You will see this broken down a little bit better when we actually start using it. And then we also have a few different windows right here that you can select from. This is the text, we have some images, but again, we are gonna be using the text and I'll show you how to use that in just a little bit. So what I wanna do next is bring in a temporary white background just so designing becomes a little bit easier. And to do that, at the bottom left over here, you're gonna see a little rectangle and if you hold on it, you're gonna see a few different shapes open up. You can bring in a circle, you can bring in a line, you can bring in some custom shapes, but for right now, we just need the rectangle. So I'm gonna select that and then I'm just gonna drag it over our canvas. And then I'm just gonna change the fill up here and I'm going to change it to white. Next thing I'm gonna do is I want to bring in some text because this is going to be a more text-based design. So to do that on the left, we're gonna hit this T button, which is text, and we're going to drag out an area which is going to be our text box. And then from here, you can type in whatever you want your design to say. Today, I'm going with a hippie soul shirt. You can see this is really, really tiny right now because what we're doing is our file size is so large and this goes by pixels. So I'm just, I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. I'm gonna make this about 500. And if you wanted to make it even bigger, you can hit V on your keyboard or just up here, it's called the move tool. And the move tool, as long as you have this button turned on, this one says right here, transform controls, the toggle must be on. Otherwise you can't resize. You have it on, you're gonna see these little buttons show up. You can also rotate this or I'm just gonna set this back to zero up here or you can scale it larger. I am not a fan of this text though. I don't think it looks very hippie at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this. By double clicking, it brings you back to the text box so you can type and I'm going to select all. And then up in the corner over here, 
you're going to see all the fonts that you have available to you that are already in PhotoP. But if you did have your own font that you want to bring in, you can click this button here, which says load font. I grabbed a font from creativefabrica.com and that one is called Funky Grind. So I'm just going to hit load font. I'm going to bring in the OTF file. And then it's going to be available for me to use. You're just going to hit the drop down again. You're going to search for it. And this was actually it, the Funky Grunge. And now my text looks more like this. I'm still not quite happy with how this looks, so I'm actually going to make it larger again. I'm going to scale it up. And I actually don't want it to be on the same line. I want soul to be underneath, so I'm just going to hit enter. But you're going to see here that the spacing between the two words is so large. First, what I want to do is I want to center this. And at the top here, I can just hit center. I just need to make sure it's all selected. Center. It's going to center in our text box. So you might want to make your text box a lot smaller. And then on the right side here, where you see the two T's, we're going to hit that. And we're going to move on over to paragraph. Character pretty much just has all the same things that we had earlier. It was where we picked the font, the size. It's just another spot that you can do that. But we're going to go to paragraph. And I'm going to change up the leading between the two lines. And that is done through this auto leading right here. We can scale it down and see how that looks in real time. And I'm liking the look of this a lot better. And I'm just going to hit this little check mark right here to set that in. So I'm liking the way this looks. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger again. And now I want to bring in some additional photos into this design to just kind of wrap it up. And to do that, you can hit file, then you're going to hit open and place. And then you're going to bring in any file or image that you want included in your design. And I am going to bring in these retro flowers. So I have these here. The problem that you can see is if I turn off my background, they have a large white border, which is not ideal at all. This is not going to print well. So we need to get rid of this white background. And to do that, over here on the left again, you're going to see this little magic wand. If you're not seeing this, just again, hold down and hover. You might be seeing the quick selection tool, but go on, click the magic wand. And then what we want to do is just back at our layer, is I'm going to right click and we're going to hit rasterize. This just makes it more editable. So it is better to have it rasterized so we can make this change because it breaks down the element kind of by the colors. It just breaks it down more so we're able to make more changes. And then what I'm gonna do is go back to the magic wand and I'm just gonna hit on the white. And then I just need to hit delete. And then to remove this little like dotted line that you see, I'm just going to hit command D, which deselects it. Then I'm just going to make sure I have the move tool selected. And oh, I'm going to make sure first that I am on the right layer back on the layer side. I'm going to select our flower and then move it. And then I'm going to scale it down. And now I want to add in another one. So I'm just going to add in another flower. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. Rasterize, magic wand, click on the white, delete, command D. And then I'm going to make sure I have my move tool selected and we're going to scale him down and then find a cool spot for him. Oh, he didn't scale right. I'm just going to make sure I'm holding the function button when I'm scaling so it scales proportionately. And then I'm going to move him. And then over at the side here, you can see these come in as the file names. If you want it to be a little less confusing, you can double click and then just name that. So I'm going to do, do like lighter flower. And then I'm going to do darker flower for this one. Mm -hmm. Now I want to make sure that my hippie soul text is actually matching these flowers. I'm not really liking the black vibe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to match that flower. But to get the exact color, we need to use what's called the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is up here on our left side. 
it's usually the crop tool. So if the crop tool is showing up for you, just hold down, wait until this little window comes up and you're going to move down to the eyedropper. And then you're going to select the color that you want to choose. And I'm going to select this yellowy color right here. This is going to come up, save it. And now you can see the color is saved down here. So now that we have our color selected, I'm going to make sure I move back to the move tool. Again, you can just hit V to get there or it's just in the top corner over here. So that we accidentally, accidentally not selecting more colors, which I keep doing. And I'm going to want to change the color of my text. So I'm going to go back to our text layer. I'm going to like double or triple click until I get to the editor. And then if you have just one word selected, that's going to make it only apply to that word. I want this to apply to everything in this text. So I'm going to hit command A, which is going to select everything. Or you can just use your mouse and your keypad to make sure everything is selected. And then back to our color changer, which is at the top here. We're going to click on that and you can see that the color we most recently selected with the color dropper tool is now showing up in this little swatch down here. And I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit OK. And now, once I go back here, now this is matching a little bit more. I'm not really liking this orange flower anymore. I'm going to get rid of him. And instead, I want to bring in more of this flower. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to hit duplicate layer. And then I'm going to drag this new layer. Oh, not that one. I'm going to drag this new layer to a new spot. And then I might scale him down a little bit while holding function. There we go. And now this is our design so far. I'm going to move this top one down a little bit as well. And there we go. And now I want to add in some cool text effects to my text layer. And to do that, we're going to go and make sure we are selecting our text layer. We're going to hit right click and we're going to hit blending options. What well, brings up what's called layer styles. There's a bunch in here that you can play with. Gradient, overlay, outer glow, drop shadow, 3D. But for this one, we're going to add in a drop shadow. If we are not big on how this turned out exactly, you can actually just click on the word and then all of these different options are going to come up so you can edit. We can change the angle. We can add how big it is. I like that. I'm going to change the angle though to the other side. I like that a little bit more. You can change this spread. You can pretty much just keep playing with this until you're happy. But I am going to change the color. You can select the color up here. But I think what I want to do is I want to use this orange. So I'm actually going to go back to the eyedropper tool again. I'm going to select the orange. And then there we go. Now that actually automatically brought it up as our drop shadow. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I did notice that the opacity was a bit low, so I'm actually going to change this here to 100. So it's actually showing up as a right color, and then I'm going to hit OK again. Now, once I'm happy with my design, I'm going to actually get rid of that white background again. That was just for our file making. You can delete it, or you can just hit this little toggle button, the eyes. The eyes hides layer, so it's no longer there, but it's not deleted. It's just hidden. And we want to save this without the background because we are using this as a print file. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit file. And then we're going to export as PNG. And then keep in mind, if you want to save this file to use at another time, you should also save it as a PSD file so that you can reopen this again and you'll still have all of your layers. So you're just going to make sure you also save PSD so that you can edit this again in the future if you accidentally close it. Now I want to create a mock-up of this so I can use it on my sales page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a mock-up of a photo of the product I am selling. So I actually got this mock-up from Etsy and I'm going to hit file. We're going to hit open and then I'm just going to open up that file. And then once this is open, now we want to bring back in that PNG file we had saved of our last design. We're going to hit open file, open in place. We're going to select that new project we had created. And then using our move tool, 
we're just going to scale this down so that it fits on the shirt correctly. Remember, if the proportions are scaling off to hold function, and I'm going to place that in here. And there we go. I think I'm happy with that. So say we have a problem like this. You can see the hair is getting in the way of our design, which is making this look not very realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eraser tool. It's just on the left over here. It's usually where the brush tool is. Just hover and then go down to eraser tool. And then to zoom in, because you want to make sure this is pretty correct, you can hit command plus, or if you're using a laptop, I just use my laptop zoom. And then up in the corner, you can change the size of your brush. You can change the hardness. I might turn the hardness down a little bit so it kind of fades. And then I'm going to brush over the parts of my design that would be disappearing in the hair. Oh, don't like that. I lost my mouse, so I don't have the best accuracy right now. But say that still looks much better. You can do a better job than me if you actually have a mouse right now. And you can zoom out by hitting Command minus. And there we go. That does look more realistic than when our design was covering the hair. And I also like to turn down the opacity on my designs just so, again, it looks a little bit more realistic. And you can do that in the corner under layers. You'll see opacity just up here and you can play with that. I'm just going to turn it down just a little bit. And there we go. I also like if the mock-up that I'm using or one that I created has wrinkles in the shirt, which is making my design look super not realistic, you can actually edit those out. And I like to do those using, you can see the little band-aid tool here. You can do the spot healing brush. So if I select that, again, I'm just going to make sure the brush size is larger. And you can just brush over pieces of the design that you want to change. So say I'm not liking I don't know, this little curve of the shirt right here. I'm just going to paint over it. And then it's going to try to match what's around it to make that blemish disappear. Oh, but make sure you have the right layer selected. I had the wrong layer selected. So I'm going to change it to the background image and I'm going to try to do that again. And then there we go. It actually smoothed it out. Luckily, this mock-up is pretty good. It doesn't have too many wrinkles, but some of them out there are pretty bad. And what you can also do, if this isn't working for you, I also like to use the patch tool. The patch tool is also content aware, means it takes in what's around it to fill in the gaps. But what you can do is select a piece of the design that you want to edit and then drag that to a new spot that you want to take over that spot. So it's kind of like copying it over. But it's not going to hard stamp it in. It's actually going to blend it so that it looks more realistic. To unselect it, you can hit Command D. And now we lost that big wrinkle down there so that this looks more realistic. Again, this mock-up wasn't too bad, but some of them out there, this is a game changer. Then once you're happy with this, you can just save it. This one we can actually save as a JPEG because we do not need the transparent background. So we can do the exact same thing. File, export as, and save it as a JPEG file. And then you can use this on your website, on your Etsy, or however you are planning to sell this design. But before we wrap up, I want to show you some additional text tools that you can use for your designs because this is by far all you can do with PhotoP. So I've actually opened up a new file over here back to with our just hippie soul. And we're going to apply some effects with this for some alternative ways that you can design with PhotoP. The first one I'm going to show you is how to add some movement or some waves into this design. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a non-text file. So I'm actually going to hit right click. I'm going to do rasterize. This is this will make it so it is no longer editable as a text. If you double click, triple click, nothing's going to happen. So make sure everything's set in stone first before converting this to a rasterized image. And then we're going to go to edit. 
transform, and we're going to hit warp. Then if you hit this style button up here, there's a bunch of options that you can do with this. And one of them that is really popular is flag or wave. And I'm actually going to do wave for this one. I'll show you flag as well. This is flag, but I'm actually going to do wave here. And then you can change just how dramatic this is. It's a bit dramatic. I'm just going to edit the bend a little bit. You can also make this a little bit bigger if you prefer. And you can just play with all of these little points right here until you're happy. This kind of text effect is super popular on Etsy right now. Everyone doing this wavy retro font. So this is how you can do it with Photo P. Again, using flag or wave, those two are two of the most popular ones. Another really cool style that I see all the time is a pattern inside of text. So either you could have like a floral pattern inside, you can have a leopard pattern, you can have a like plaid pattern. I'm going to show you how to do that with Photo P. You are going to need to go find a pattern first. I've already grabbed a floral one and I'm going to bring this in by going to file, open in place, and then I'm going to bring in that new pattern. And then I'm going to make sure it is showing up on top. So I'm going to go back to my layers because I can see here that this is actually showing underneath my text, which I don't want. So I'm going to just hold it and drag it on top. There we go. And then now it's covering, which is an issue. So on this file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to hit clipping mask. And what that does is it locks the top layer to the design below. If I add in a file in between these two, it wouldn't work. It needs to be on top of your text or whatever sheet you want this form to take. And I'm just going to add in a background for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. And this is how it turns out. I think this looks beautiful. I'm not really huge on the wave right now. I don't think I would have the wave and the pattern. I might just do hippie soul with the pattern. I'm going to delete or hide this layer again. I'm going to save it. And then again, I would bring that onto our moth up. But what happens if I actually don't want the pattern inside? I want the text cut out of the pattern. I'm going to move the pattern now again back behind the text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our text. I'm going to select it. I'm actually just going to quickly do this. I'm going to hit the magic wand and I'm going to select all of the black. This is all of the pieces that I want cut out of the background to select more than one object at once. Make sure you're holding shift. And now you're going to have this selection. You can see the dotted line. And with that selected, we're going to go back to our layers. We're going to click onto the pattern. And then we're going to go to layer. Then we are going to go to raster mask and we're going to hit hide selection. And then we're just going to make sure that we toggle off our text because it's still on top. We're going to do delete it or you can just hide it. And now you're going to see that it's actually cut out of the pattern. So now going back into our design, we have a cool pattern box with our text taken out of it so that the shirt or whatever color is behind is showing through. I'm going to erase like I did before. First, make sure this is rasterized. And I'm just going to hastily do this right now. And there we go. And now again, save this as a JPEG, file, export as, JPEG. And if you wanted to save this file with layers, make sure you're saving this as a PSD file as well. And then quickly before we wrap up, not only can you remove wrinkles, but also if like hair is in the way or you just have an object that you do not want in your photo, you can use things like the spot healing brush or the patch tool again, just to edit those out. Just adjust it and select the pieces of hair that you don't want. And it's going to try to fill in the spot. So you can see there, they've cut off the hair. You might have to play with this a little bit, maybe change the hardness up or the sizing, but I'm just showing you quickly how you can edit things out of mockups or photos quickly with Photo P. 
All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. And we have not even scratched the surface of what you can do in PhotoP. Photoshop is an intense program and PhotoP can pretty much do everything that you can do in Photoshop. Not that I've compared apples to apples, but whenever I can't find a tutorial on PhotoP, I just look up the Photoshop tutorial and the same thing exists in PhotoP. You can check out other tutorials. This one was just specifically for designing designs and creating mockups, but you can do tons of image editing. You can edit the colors in your photos. There is limitless amounts of things you can do for this free browser Photoshop, which is just insane that it exists and it's never been shut down. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful and thanks and I'll see you online. Bye.